took a little bit of heat for uh, suggesting that there's a link or a potential link between utilitarianism and totalitarianism. I stand by that point of view, by the way. As Heidelade says, um, when you say the end justifies the means, you're being somewhat totalitarian, aren't you? Because you're saying that the means might not be the nicest ones. In other words, some people might not like what happens to them uh, on the way to the ends. Uh, but at, once we get there, it'll be justified. That's typical totalitarian stuff. Um, the Khmer Rouge, the, uh, Stalin, Hitler, these people, they used this kind of language, can't make an omelet without breaking eggs, etc. Nothing will ever get done unless we can make decisions, and to make decisions you have to sometimes be harsh. I agree. And we do need to make decisions. We do need to be harsh sometimes. We do need to make Sophie's choices sometimes. I won't say otherwise. But I go back to uh, my uh, reading of Nietzsche's uh, aphorism, where he says, if you want peace of mind and a comfortable life, then believe. If you want knowledge, then inquire. <laughs> um, I don't really think that he was actually positing that one of these two choices is right. In other words, he's not really saying that belief is stupid because it leads to jelly-headed contentment. Um, he's simply saying, if you want A, then do this. If you want B, then do that. Now, of course, <laughs> a lot of people are going to take exception to that simply because of his absolutely acidic, sneering dismissal of anything remotely resembling belief. The problem is, of course, people believe in all kinds of things. Um, I don't mean this as an accusation, but I form the opinion that logic rolls the, the dice believes in logic. Um, there are those out there who will, who have formed the opinion uh, that I believe in Anakantavada. Um, you know, we all assign beliefs to other people, don't we? We say, well, this is what you think, uh, in order to make sense out of them. We have to strawman people almost in order to make any sense out of them whatsoever. Um, identity is, in a certain sense, a species of straw manning. So anyway, <clears throat> belief can be more than just belief in a god. It can be belief in any kind of absolute, any kind of what I call a place to stand. Archimedes is place to stand. I think that that's what, uh, what Nietzsche would have meant when he said, belief, that's just a place to stand, a place to anchor yourself and proceed from there. Well, uh, it doesn't strike me as though there is any such spot, but in some people's view of the world, there apparently is. I won't dispute that. Um, <clears throat> I won't try and talk them out of that. I'll simply say this is why I don't subscribe to that point of view. <clears throat> Likewise with totalitarianism and utilitarianism. Um, some people might say that that's a false equivalency or, I don't know, some kind of smear or something like that. I didn't mean it like that at all. All I'm saying is that you can have too much of anything. <laughs> uh, you can take anything a little bit too far. Um, the uh, entire ethos of our civilization these days is more or less utilitarian, uh, but we're sort of discovering the limits of the utility of utilitarianism when it, you know, we just, to make nine people happy, we torture the tenth, that kind of thing, that kind of absurd logic that is utilitarian. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so anyway, um, I'm not really saying that there's anything wrong with utilitarianism. I'm simply sort of juxtaposing it with its competitor, the social contract. The social contract has flaws as well. The social contract has inherent problems. Um, <clears throat> all of ancient political thinking, or almost all of ancient political thinking, i.e. Greece, Rome, etc., at least the sort of more well-thought-out ones, were social contract. Now, of course, <laughs> under the social contract, you completely remove utility, utilitarianism, from the picture. So you get things like slavery. You get things like um, oh, a foreign policy, which amounts to little more than genocide. <laughs> uh, that kind of thing. Um... Again, it's not really, I'm not really trying to imply that one is superior to the other. I just want to sort of say, let's compare these two um, and say that each one has its flaws. 
and maybe we might want to proceed with elements of both in terms of managing our society. Uh, we don't want to be strictly social contractual uh, because, uh, well, we've already decided that for whatever reason, and, and I think that the reasons are valid to be perfectly honest, that we don't want slavery, that we don't want genocide, that we don't want, oh, um, regiments of black-booted thugs goose-stepping through our cities. <laughs> we don't want that. Although, of course, you know, that's utilitarianism gone amok. And, you know, just as the social contract gone amok is the Roman Republic. Although some people might take exception with that too. But the point is, um, you've got two possibilities here. Take your pick or mix both. Uh, it's like, as I say, Nietzsche's view of belief versus inquiry. I don't, I don't see one as inherently superior to another. They are simply different ways of looking at the world, and they are not necessarily incompatible. Um, I've been trying for quite a while to sort of um, engage some people in a discussion uh, along the lines of uh, a blending of life denial and life affirmation. Um, I suggested that that might be something of a false dichotomy. Uh, dichotomy, I don't really know stupid raven. I don't even know if, uh, if, if such, a, such a merging, or at least compatibility of the two is possible. But I think it's a pretty fascinating thing to, uh, a pretty fascinating thing to explore. The duality, and I don't mean duality, i.e. subject-object, or matter, energy, or whatever. Uh, I mean just the duality of life is worth living and life is not worth living. I'd like to see a point of view that can merge the two of those or balance or encompass both of those. I think it's been done. It's Thanksgiving here in Canada today and it's surprising how noisy the downtown area is. But, um, yeah, that was my point, is to try to merge both. Uh, or at least to compare both. Uh, or to come up with a philosophy that encompasses both. Um, once again, you point to the east and you do see that such things are at least possible. The Hindus, Buddhists, and Jains seem to have pulled it off. Um, if indeed we want to actually call them by those names, which are religious inherently. Um, the world just is. What do we make of it? Is it worth living in? Is it not worth living in? Who decides and how do we solve our disagreements? <laughs>